We are talking about the folk horror movie called Dogged. This one directed by Richard Roundtree and is coming to us on DVD and streaming on the 9th of July 2018 by Left Films. And I would best describe this movie as a companion piece to The Wicker Man. So the story here focuses on this young lad called Sam. And he has comes from this um, tidal island, which is basically, uh, if you don't know where, it's kind of off, off the coast of the mainland in the UK. And um, when, the t when the tide is in, basically, you can't get to it. It's all kind of obviously cut off by water. And obviously when the tide goes out, you can kind of drive straight onto the mainland. So they're somewhat kind of cut off. And it's this sort of small somewhat rural community that are kind of you know in part of the UK but uh, somewhat separate shall we say and um, he's this guy's gone off to university he's kind of, kind of moved outside the community so to speak but he's called back um, to go to a funeral this young girl seemingly has died in a tragic accident but there's some question as to uh, was it something else and when he's there he it gets kind of embroiled in this kind of strange um, sort of cult behaviour that seems to be uh, taken part by some of the, uh, the the locals in this kind of this village basically. And there's there's a strange kind of air of menace. Uh, he's kind of like romantically involved with the uh, the pastor's daughter, and that's going to be uh, problematic for him kind of later on down the line. And this kind of like this weird kind of like pagans kind of star cult all who are uh, very much kind of wanting to go back to nature and wear these kind of like animal masks and they basically see him as a kind of someone who's uh, basically embraced the uh, decadent lifestyle of the kind of the, uh, they're not what they want essentially and obviously what happens you have to watch the movie to find out. So let's talk dogged. Odd choice of name I will say, it's nothing to do with parking your car up in a, in a roadside and having sex that so people can see. If you know what I'm talking about, you're not from the UK clearly, but uh, trust me, it's a thing. Um, so anyway, Dogs is low budget British indie movie. Uh, like I've said, it, it has that, it's that kind of like same genre, if you like, as the kind of the Wicker Man and stuff like that. This sort of weird kind of like, uh, very kind of uh, insulated kind of community that kind of doesn't sort of take to outsiders and maybe get up to some things that they shouldn't do. Um, the story here is, 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 is somewhat intriguing, obviously, this kind of seeing this guy is kind of transitioning into finding out what, obviously what's happened and how big the kind of like this thing goes and who's involved, etc. It's obviously quite intriguing as obviously we see what happens and obviously this kind of story unfolding in front of us and his reactions to it. Um, it's all kind of very kind of lo-fi, we do kind of feel this really is a genuine kind of like community that does seem like it would function in this kind of like this very kind of like cut off way compared to the rest of society but without kind of like living in this donate they all have the kind of the, the mod cons and stuff but you, you, you kind of because of the way it's filmed and the actors that they've got it does feel like it is this real kind of like little kind of like strange community that they've kind of got there and uh, towards the end of the movie we do see some kind of like some graphic scenes of, of gore and I've got to say, there's some, some, some quite, there's quite a good scene involving a kind of a kind of human sacrifice and stuff like that, which I thought was you know quite chilling at times. However, this film does suffer from a number of things. Number one, it's way too long. This film runs at nearly two hours, and it simply doesn't need to be that long at all. The story here really doesn't warrant this kind of long running time. There's, there's no real need to have it any more than kind of like 90 minutes but I would say maybe about 80 minutes 85 minutes would, would be suffice and make this film a lot punchier because there are uh, lots of scenes that are kind of just wandering around and transitioning from kind of one scene to another that I feel could be edited down and make a much more concise movie and, and doesn't feel like it's kind of going at a, sometimes at a bit of a snail's pace of what it does um, the amateurish background of this movie does kind of come come into the forefront as well. There's some quite poor camera work, I've got to say. Quite often the camera will be unfocused, uh, and it's particularly towards the end when we can see on, on more violent scenes, the camera has a tendency to be a bit too clone on the close-ups. You can't really kind of see what's going going on. 
um, or, or stuff won't be kind of lined up properly and like I've said be out of focus. So I thought the sort of cinematography and camera work were quite poor. There's also some instances where it's kind of vastly underlit so you kind of can't see what's going on. The acting's a mixed bag. I thought the, the main character, Sam, did, did a, a, an okay job here. A somewhat of a, a bewildered young man who doesn't really know what's going on. Um, but he kind of does fall into the sort of same tropes and, and kind of like cliches that you do in kind of horror films, but that's more the writing rather than the acting. Uh, but however, there are some smaller parts here that the, 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 the cast are clearly not actors at, at, at a trade and probably friends of the production, I get the impression. And it really does show, uh, obviously, in the kind of the acting. The standout actor for me is the guy who plays the, the, the pastor, the priest. Uh, very charismatic. He's the kind of the, the leader, uh, the spiritual leader of both, the, obviously, the church and also this kind of like this strange cult. He's the best actor in the movie, I would say, and, and definitely has um, some, you know, some charm and kind of like weird, uh, chilling charisma about him. So he was actually quite good, I've got to say. However, the majority of the cast here, I feel, suffer purely down to probably lack of experience and feeling very, very sort of unsure. And even the way they kind of they move and stuff, it sometimes seems exaggerated uh, and kind of just really, you know, not not, not natural. Um, there are some kind of cliches in the writing as well, you know, just it does kind of go down somewhat familiar paths and it, it goes off in a tangent sometimes where it doesn't need to in places. Um, like I said, this movie's way too long and I think if it was cut down, it would be a much more punchy film. And there's certain scenes, there's probably certain even characters uh, that you could probably cut out entirely. Uh, though I did like the kind of the dynamic here between the kind of the, the parents and stuff like that. Uh, you know, there's Sam's parents and obviously... Um, the, the, the pastor and his, his daughter, etc. there, the kind of family dynamic. Uh, one sort of maybe nitpicky thing, um, when we have these kind of like these cultists wearing these animal masks, I've got to say they're a bit, um, not what I would have chosen, I have to say, because they're, they're kind of like these you know, big, huge animal heads that you see like mascots wearing. And when, when we're chasing people in the woods, these things are going to just going to turn around or your vision is going to be really limited. I'm a bit critical when it comes to your mask serial killers and the, and the kind of the uh, the real real world applications about what would actually happen. And a small kind of face mask, maybe with a, the animal sort of thing going on, I think would have worked better than these kind of these big bulky mascot things that I simply use. Well, there's one thing where this guy's chasing and he looks around and he clearly doesn't know where he's looking. Um, you know, it's just it's just it's a bit silly. But that's maybe a little bit nitpicky. Overall, I was quite intrigued with this story. I wanted to see, obviously, what happened to this, this character and ultimately how it all sort of shook up. I really didn't get the feel, I didn't really quite understand the motivations of the cultists and what they were actually trying to do. Were they trying to sacrifice people for, you know, better land or something? They really didn't kind of tell you about why it is they were doing it. All that, they, all that it really said was that they were kind of wanted to go back to nature but they're all living in these big modern houses with cars and stuff like that so I really didn't get the feel that was kind of quite right uh, so I got I think it missed a bit of a trick there with kind of really giving you telling you why these people are doing these kind of like these sort of sacrifices and there's some dialogue that lets you believe that this has been going on for a while but I don't really see what the end game is why is they're doing it I mean in most of these cult films they tend to be doing it for some kind of payoff that doesn't seem to be the case here Overall, I've got to say, this definitely has some interesting elements in it, but I feel the maybe lack of experience behind and in front of the camera here does hinder this movie in becoming uh, anything more than kind of a curiosity piece, if you like movies like the, the Wicker Man and stuff like that, and maybe that sort of ilk of films. And I've got to say, maybe the amateurish nature maybe put some sort of like uh, mainstream viewers off, but it does have some interesting things going on. I will give it a 4 out of 10. Uh, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.